Today we're making this absolutely incredible Twix cake. This is one of my favorite cakes I've made in a while. The first step is to make our thick caramel filling. So we add our unsalted butter, light brown sugar, light corn syrup, and sweetened condensed milk into a large saucepan. We give this a quick stir just to combine those ingredients and make it easier for them to melt down together. Then we place it over a medium high heat and stir continuously until the mixture thins out and begins to bubble. Once it reaches this stage, it's time to add in a little bit of heavy cream. And once that's stirred in, it's time to add our digital thermometer into the pan. Now it's super important that you use a digital thermometer in this caramel because we need it to reach 238 degrees Fahrenheit or 114 degrees Celsius, which is the softball stage. It's super important that we get it to the right temperature so that it has the perfect consistency inside of our cake. Once our mixture reaches that temperature, we're going to remove it from heat and we're adding in one teaspoon of vanilla and one teaspoon of salt. We're going to stir that together and then pour it into a separate container to let the caramel cool. This recipe can be stored at room temperature for up to two days or in the fridge for up to a month. So now that our caramel is all ready to go, we're going to set that aside and start to work on our shortbread crust. The first step here is to preheat our oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or about 175 degrees Celsius. Then we are using either a food processor or a rolling pin and a Ziploc baggie to crush up our shortbread cookies. Both of these methods work well. My food processor had just broken so I tried to use my blender which did not actually work great. So definitely use either a food processor or a rolling pin. Add a little bit of melted butter. The main goal here is to get your crumbs to stick together when you squeeze them in your palm like that and once your cookie crumbs seem at that stage you're gonna press them into your prepared 8 inch cake pans. You want to flatten them to a nice compact crust using the bottom of a measuring cup or a glass and then you're gonna pop them into the oven to bake. While our crusts bake and cool, we start to work on our vanilla cake layers. The first step is to cream together our unsalted butter and our granulated sugar. So we're going to mix on a high speed until the mixture becomes lighter in color like this. Then we mix in our egg whites on a medium speed until combined. Don't worry if the mixture starts to look like it's broken at this stage. It'll come together once we add in our dry ingredients. Speaking of our dry ingredients, we're adding in half of those, which includes our cake flour, our baking powder, and our salts. And once those have been mixed together on a low speed, we're adding in our sour cream, our oil, and our vanilla extract. I like to mix these together on a medium speed, and once they're incorporated into the batter, we add in our last bit of dry ingredients. Throughout this process, remember to scrape the sides of your bowl, as a lot of times some of the flour can get trapped there, and you want to make sure everything is getting mixed together properly. Our batter looks beautiful and silky smooth, so it's time to pour it on top of our cooled shortbread crusts. We're dividing our batter evenly between our three 8-inch pans, and we're baking these for our about 34 to 36 minutes in a 350 degree Fahrenheit or 175 degree Celsius oven. I also like to rotate my pans halfway through just to make sure that all my cake layers bake up nice and even. The last component of this cake is our semi-sweet chocolate buttercream and that is what we're working on next. We start by mixing our butter on a medium speed until it's nice and smooth. Then we add in our unsweetened baking cocoa, vanilla extract, and a little bit of fine salt. You want to mix this on a low speed until all of your ingredients are combined. And then it's time for the messy part. We are going to very slowly incorporate our powdered sugar. Once we've added in half of our powdered sugar, we take a little break and we add in our heavy cream. This just makes the frosting so much easier to mix. Once we've added in the rest of our powdered sugar, the last ingredient to add is our melted and cooled chocolate. Now it's super important that you've let your chocolate sit for about 10 minutes so that it's not super hot if it's too warm, it's going to melt the butter in your frosting, so letting it cool just a little bit will give your frosting the perfect consistency. Now that all the components of our cake are ready to go, it's time to assemble this cake. We're going to take our serrated knife here and level our cake layers just by trimming off the top. They bake up pretty flat, but leveling them makes the cake so much easier just to stack and frost, so I still recommend doing it. We're building this cake on a greaseproof 10-inch cake board, and I like to use a little bit of buttercream on the bottom there just to help keep that first cake layer in place. We're piping a ring of our semi-sweet chocolate butter cream around our cake layer and then adding that thick caramel filling into the center. If your caramel filling is too firm to spread, once it's cooled down fully, you can always pop it into the, to the microwave for about 30 seconds just to make it easier to work with. After covering the top of our caramel with some more chocolate buttercream, we're repeating this process with our remaining cake layers. Now I made this cake with three 8 inch cake layers, but you could also use this recipe to make four 7 inch cake layers or four 6 inch cake layers, but they would take a little bit longer to bake. I also usually recommend flipping my top cake layer upside down to make the cake easier to frost, but because each of these cake layers has a crust on the bottom, we're going to keep them all facing the same direction as we stack them. Next we cover the cake in a crumb coat, which is just a thin layer of buttercream to help lock in any crumbs which is super important because these cake layers have that shortbread crust. After letting the cake chill in the fridge or freezer until the frosting is firm to the touch, we're adding on a second thicker layer of frosting. I decided to decorate this cake with an icing cone, but you can also just use a bench scraper and make smooth frosting around the cake. 
After getting that top edge nice and crisp, I used some of my remaining shortbread crumb to add some decoration around the base of the cake, and then I gently pressed it into the frosting with a small offset spatula. To decorate the top of the cake, I placed my remaining frosting into a piping bag fit with a Wilton 1M tip or any open star tip would work, piped some small dollops on top of the cake, and then I cut up some fun sized Twix bars and pressed them into place on top of those dollops. I felt like this cake really needed to scream caramel and shortbread, so on top of these dollops I also sprinkled some of my shortbread crumble, and then I really went to town with my remaining caramel drizzle. I heated it up even more in the microwave to give it a much thinner consistency that I could drizzle like this. Originally I was just going to spoon this over the frosting dollops, but that felt a little too boring to me, so I went crazy and I actually kind of made some caramel loops on the side of the cake. And I'm so happy that I did because the finished cake looked so cool and over the top and just screamed caramel and shortbread. I really love this cake recipe because when you cut it, it truly looks just like a Twix bar. You can see that shortbread crust, that really thick caramel filling, and that delicious chocolate buttercream. If you want to make this at home, the recipe is linked in the video description. And until next time, happy baking!